Son is the court goalkeeper, Michal A. Martin, back in the championship team again this year, his third year playing championship football. Well, there he is. And they've got uh, reserve goalkeeper Mark White, who's back in the fold again, having missed last year. Well, Cork, the highest-ranked team, of course, here among these two, but they had to hold off a challenge of Westmeath recently in order to preserve their Division Two status. Limerick, as Pat was mentioning there, had a very good Division Three campaign, just fell short at the end and didn't quite make it. It's got to be Limerick who will play from left to right in the first half. Both sides selected and unchanged. So no excuses. The referee is Brendan Cawley from Kildare, who took charge of the team's last meeting in 2019. First possession for Limerick and Tommy Childs. Tommy's sending it out there towards Killian Fahey. And this is Gordon Brown, the number seven. Tommy Childs taking it back again here, about to be challenged by Brian Hartnett. Hartnett putting in the first challenge. It's still Childs from Galtig Gales, back as far as Gordon Brown. And Brown has made a lot of headway here, has support as well. Kicks it himself and kicks it up and kicks it over the bar. That's a very good start. It's only taken them about 26 seconds to get their opening point, and that's Gordon Brown, the point scorer. Well, what you're looking at there, Joe, is the strengths of, of, of Limerick in evidence. They're strong counter-attacking. They're, run, they're runners from deep. They're half-back line. But what you're also seeing is Cork's liability, and Cork's failing in the league thus far was the defence. A defence that have conceded 80, over 18 points a game, and they were very easily opened up by Gordon Brown. Luke Connolly now, very good passer of the ball, plays it in there intended for Dan Deneen, trying to get his hands on it and retain it. Eventually it is collected, however, by uh, Bob Childs. Robert, or Bob Childs, helped out there by Ian Corbett, taking it back from Tommy Childs, giving it to Dara Tracy, the 27-year-old midfielder, who's fouled, fouled by the core captain, Ian Maguire. What's interesting in the Cox setup is that Sean Potter is a free man in defence and is playing as a sweeper in front of, of Daniel O'Mahony. Picked uh, to wear the number two jersey, uh, but I think uh, he's a kind of a player who can play just about anywhere in the middle eight in particular. Limerick come again now, and it's Brian Fanning now, their fullback, as far as in Fahey. Fahey striding forward, helped out here by Hugh Burke. All the way down towards the full forward, doesn't quite get to it there. Good work by Daniel Amani to get his hands on that. Back out to Luke Connolly, it comes again. Breezing through the centre here, bypassing the first would-be challenge from Dara Tracy. It's Luke Connolly inside towards Brian Hurley, bounced off his chest, comes back to Rory Dean. There's a gap here and Rory Dean can score. Will it be a goal or a point? It's a possible goal here and it trickles in eventually. John O'Rourke, the one who got to it. And Cork get a goal, and it's John O'Rourke has got it. A goal coming here after three minutes, and the only time that John O'Rourke has ever scored a goal before, would you believe it, was back in his first championship season, and it was here against Limerick. Rory Dean made it. And uh, they all count. It was a soft goal, but at the end of the day, all goals count. Uh, 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 well-anticipated breaking ball by Rory Dean. Rory Dean doing what he does best, running at the centre of the defence. Rory is a great ball carrier. Probably, I thought, should have gone himself, but... Passed it to John O'Rourke, fortuitous, I think it went off the back of his head, but look, it's a goal, uh, it's a good start for Cork, less than three minutes and they're two points, on the, two points ahead. Well, as I mentioned, he's only once ever scored a championship goal before, now the concern is about Donal O'Sullivan, a doctor here in Limerick, and he now requires the medical intervention of doctor and physio, I think that's Stephen Lucy who's attending to him, former player, as a team doctor as well, John O'Rourke, who's... Uh, now 29 years of age, and made his bow in the championship back in 2013. And at stage, Mark Cunahan would still have been the boss, and uh, brought him in, a young player at that time, gave him his introduction. But there's real concern about the Limerick goalkeeper. Uh, it was a collision, clearly, and if there's any kind of concussion whatsoever, he would be forced off, and they would be forced to bring in Aaron O'Sullivan from Palace Green, who's never played championship before, and that would be a considerable loss. Donald O'Sullivan 
is still receiving the attention. Billy Lee there, the manager yep. in the background, and that's the substitute goalkeeper. Well, I doubt very much he expected. He's going to have to come on, and Donald O'Sullivan is going to have to leave the fray, it appears. Yeah, it's a huge blow for Limerick because not alone is Donald O'Sullivan an outstanding keeper, but Donald O'Sullivan is their regular 45, and he strokes over long distance frees. But what's interesting about Cox set up, and I noticed it again against Westmeath, that they're certainly trying to tweak their game plan. Cork were notorious for being a running team with the ball, too often running into cul-de-sacs, too often turning over the ball, too often being slow and ponderous on the ball. But I noticed from the Westmeath game in their last league game, and again today, there's more of an emphasis on kicking the ball, and what's noted is the role of Luke Connolly. Luke is playing not inside in the full forward position where he was located. Luke is playing out around the middle of the field. Uh, there's a two-man full forward line of Dan Deneen and Brian Hurley, and Luke... The one thing about Luke is he's obviously he's a great free taker, but he's a very good kick passer and he's kick passing some lovely kick passes into the full forward line. So that's that's a change in Cox tactics, certainly from last year and from the earlier rounds in the league. They're becoming more a kicking team. Well, the good news is that the uh, goalkeeper, Donald O'Sullivan, is at least sitting up now. Doubt very much he's going to be able to continue. In fact, he's been helped off. He's gone. When Cork played Limerick two years ago in Porky Reen, Limerick only scored six points that night, and this man here, the goalkeeper, kicked half of those scores, three of them, all from long-range frees. So he's a huge loss. He's a big blow, he's a big blow. Like I said, he's one of the more experienced players, he's a leader, and, and like I said, that, that long-range freeze, the 45 metres, he's very, very accurate with them. So, you know, to replace a keeper uh, after five minutes is a big, big blow to Limerick because the keeper is the conductor, and the modern-day keeper now is a sweeper-keeper. He's the conductor of the fence. Uh, he, 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 he was in the counter-attack, so we don't know much about this sub-keeper, Adam O'Sullivan. Well, it's his championship debut right now. He's from Palace Green, and he's kicked that ball into the middle, and Limerick have managed to take possession of it there with Bob Childs, all the way back as far as Adrian Enright, retained here, and ready to drive forward again is Ian Corbett, giving it off as far as Dara Tracy. Ian Sheehan unable to get to it. It was uh, Kevin O'Donovan who put in the challenge. The Nemo Rangers player kicked down dangerously. Well, the work from the sideline is that it is still a temporary substitution, that of Aaron O'Sullivan for goalkeeper Donald O'Sullivan. So we'll watch developments there with interest. Paul Walsh now getting it out as far as Kevin Flahu. It's Sean Meehan. Last year played his full part, Meehan, in that victory over Kerry in the Munster semi-final. Here he is again here, playing it forward. Coming out to try and collect this and doing so is Brian Hurley, player who's been plagued with injuries. It's a good record of goal scoring against Limerick as well. Gives it off this time to Dan Deneen, the debutant, looking for his first ever championship score. And that one has gone the right-hand side of the upright, first wide of the match by Cork. Well, Dan Deneen has taken a while to get his opportunity to get into the championship team, and I'm sure he's going to try and take it with both hands. Luke Connolly, we know all about. They're putting pressure on the new goalkeeper, Aaron O'Sullivan, not allowing any short ones, so he has to kick long. And Limerick again win that one. That's the second, second ball that he's kicked long, and it's the second one that Limerick has won. Enright took it. Back out here as far as Killian Fahey. Returned it to the middle as far as Dara Tracy. Tracy trying to go by the first man. Laying it off here. And that ball Wait, kicked by Danny Neville. And Danny Neville has hit it to the right as well. So a wide apiece. A goal for Cork. A point for Limerick after nearly eight minutes. But uh, much of the first eight minutes, in case you joined us late, was a pause and a, a stoppage because of an injury to goalkeeper Donald O'Sullivan of Limerick, who's had to be replaced, at least for now, temporarily. Kevin O'Donovan. Here's Daniel O'Mahony from Knock Nagree. From last year's under 20 team, they came into that championship as defending All Ireland champions, having won in 2019. He wasn't part of that team, but uh, was last year, beaten by Kerry. Here comes Ian Maguire. Linking up with Luke Connolly. Again, that pass of his, which is so typical of the man. Won back by Limerick, however. And control taken over once again by Ian Corbett, an all-star nominee last year. Very, very highly regarded footballer. Bob Childs comes out, makes it his. Fouled. 
Brian Hartnett, the one who caught him that time. Hartnett yet to settle into the match. He's only 21 years of age. One of Cork's young breed. Limerick come downfield again, looking for their next score. It'll be Killian Fahey who will bring this one down into the corner as far as Danny Neville, who's had one wide already. Taking on Cowter. Cowter reached in. Cotter, it's got to be a free for Limerick from the 13 meter line. Chance for them to kick over their second score, although the angle is an acute one. That would be the one failing Sean Powder would have in the sense that he's not a natural defender. Uh, Sean Powder's strength is a bit like Jack McCaffrey or a Gavin White. He, his, his, his transition from defence to attack, his, his lightning speed on the back foot forced to defend. As in this instance, he was forced into foul and he looked a bit, just a bit vulnerable. Hugh Burke is the one who's going to take this. Got a goal and six in Limerick's opening championship match. A very, very easy and comprehensive win against Waterford. And that one is measured expertly. And it's a, a second point by Limerick and a first by Hugh Burke. Yeah, and at this stage, Joe, I mean, we have perfect conditions for football today. There's no wind, no wind, a dry ball, beautiful pitch. And at the moment, looks like two very evenly matched teams. Limerick once again basically surrendering the kick out to Cork. Sean Meehan now able to bring it out past his own 45 metre line. Ian Maguire. Very, very highly regarded footballer throughout the Gaelic football community. Brian Hartnett. Here's Paul Walsh, cousin of Aidan, who was a Cork hurler and footballing star over much of the last decade. Sean Meehan again caught this time by Kean Lynch, and he made sure the referee, Brendan Cawley from Kildare, knew all about it. It was Kean Sheehan, I think, Kean Lynch is in the other game. Kean Sheehan, indeed. <laughs> Homer nods. Free kick in any case, and it's going to be uh, Luke Connolly who's going to take it. I've got it. You're behind me, cover up, yeah? Connolly playing today in his uh, 16th championship match. Ready to give it everything he's got. 50 meters out, it's going to go left. Competing for it in there was John O'Rourke. Comes back out towards Brad Hurley. Ready to take on Ian Corbett. Corbett reaching in over his shoulders that was enough for the referee to blow his whistle free kick will be to Cork and uh, Brian Hurley will be the one who will take it it would appear just caught that time so chance for Cork's second score first one came from John O'Rourke a goal after just three minutes of play and that's landed beautifully over the crossbar Good start that's, by Van Hurley. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful pint. Lovely pint at free. Lovely technique. Beautiful stroke. Followed through with the kicking foot. He was a, very impressive when he came on as a sub against Westmead. He got one four from playing. He's he when he's in form, he's a very difficult opponent to, to mark. Limerick had to work hard to get that ball out from the short kick out to Adrian Enright. Kicking it down into the corner here. Neville going for it, trying to hold on to it. Instead, it's the Cork fullback, Daniel O'Mahony, who manages to get there first. Out via Meehan, out as far as Paul Walsh. And now, Sean Powter able to run forward, taking on the corner forward, Hugh Burke. It's still Powter. Began his career in the minors, also wearing number two. As a, a right corner back, way back along. That's kicked in there well by Rory Dean. Looking to try and find its way in towards Dan Deneen, but instead... It's Ian Corbett playing it short as far as Sean O'Dean, former Sigerson Cup winner with UCD. Gordon Brown got the first point of the match for Limerick. O'Dea again. Cautiously knocking it around there inside their own 45. Cork retreating. Limerick able to come forward. Bob Childs as far as Kian Sheehan. Charles again, and there's a little player on the deck inside there. The referee didn't do anything about it. It's uh, the corner forward, Danny Neville, is down. He looked at the umpire as well. The umpire saw nothing either. Play continues. Darryl Tracy. Crossover here it comes. Hubert picking himself off the ground, fouled by Kevin Flahev. It comes back to Ian Corbett, a 28 year old captain. And Corbett's down. And the referee slowly walks up towards where the incident occurred. Ian Maguire pleading on behalf of his colleagues. 
One thing, Ger, you would be impressed by the play of Daniel O'Mahony at fullback. A traditional fullback, he's not sitting back to try to defend, he's trying to win the ball first time, and he's probably got away with two I do be his challenges, perhaps. I think Danny Neville was on the wrong end of probably should have got two frees. But, uh, he's a good fullback. So it's a yellow card for Ian Maguire. First yellow card of the match. This is the last incident. That ball was kicked in. You can see there oh, between the two lines, 20 and 13, Danny Neville was down. And there's the other one there. It was a high yep, shoulder high by shoulder. Maguire. Late tackle. Could have been a black card just as easy as a yellow card. Certainly could. Referee is having words with his uh, umpires behind the goal while play continues. The notebook, as you can see, still in hand as he completed his work in that respect for now. No, I will say about this referee, Brendan Cawley, I, was, I watched a game between Offaly and Lout, which he refereed, and it was a tough, no-nonsense, physical championship battle, and he did a great job, left the game flow. He's trying to leave the game flow, but leaving the game flow when there's obvious fouls, I'm not too sure whether I agree with that or not. Limerick, like I said, will be aggrieved that they haven't got at least two extra frees. Robbie Burke playing in his second championship match, kicks it, and he's got it just inside the right hand upright. Not, oh no, it's not. Oh, one umpire was coming to wave it as a point, and the other man very belatedly went out and waved it. I always have trust for one thing. Okay. So it's one point. No joy for Robbie Burke. Walsh now. Out as far as Sean Powter. Played brilliantly against Kerry, then missed the month's final last year against Ferrari. Donald O'Mahony. Any man to be so far? Here he is, Ian Maguire. Kevin Flahev, one of the strong Douglas contingent on this Cork team today. As you can see, Le Le Limerick are setting up with all the 15 players behind in their own half. John O'Rourke. Slipping. Danny Taylor here. Held on to by Paul Walsh. Brian Hartnett. Build up is very slow. Tinkering, patient. If it comes off, it'll be great. From a court point of view, it's uh, Maguire. Back as far as Hartnett again. Oh, yeah. and this time he holds on too long. So Cork get nothing for their patience. Well, what, what was impressive there was that yes, Limerick had all the bodies back, but they were putting they were putting one and two challenges in on the ball carrier. And in this case, they forced uh, uh, over carrying. I'd worry about Cork in that instance because Cork were back to some of their old habits, that slow, ponderous lateral play, which is very easy to defend against. Dara Tracy now forming a very good midfield alliance with uh, Tommy Childs in this Limerick team this year. It's almost like a, a club side which Billy Lee has created. Billy's been the manager now since 2017. There was a, a tug there of the jersey, so it's going to be a free against Paul Walsh. Limerick uh, ready to kick this back in again. It'll be Ian Maguire playing in his 26th sixth ever championship game. Killian Fahey made a bright start to the game and after he was hit that he hit that ball away he was fouled by Luke Connolly so it's got to be a free from where the ball has landed one thing you would be if you were cock management you would be disappointed with their tackling and their indiscipline they've given away a lot of needless and, and I would say if a freeze of a soft variety they were sort of unnecessary so you know put keeping remember Limerick no Limerick forwards has yet scored from playing after 17 minutes of play, which is disappointing given the amount of possession they've had. Killian Fahey will take this. Not sure if we're going to have a water break fairly soon because we did have that uh, three or four minute delay for the injury to Donald O'Sullivan, which forced him out of the match, the goalkeeper. Hugh Burke, and that's two from two for Hugh. The 24 year old from Adair in County Limerick. So one between them. It's a close game, Jerk. There's nothing, like I said, there's nothing between them. Uh, I'd be disappointed with Cork as well. Cork are playing the two-man full forward line, Dan Danina and, and Brian Hurley, but are getting no ball into it because of, of the defensive work done by Limerick. Powter runs, finds a space, locates Kevin O'Donovan up to the 45-meter line, in as far as Hurley. 
looking to try and turn, getting it onto the right back as far as Maguire. Scoring chance here for Ian Maguire. First of the day for the Bars man, the captain of this Cork team. One, two to three points. Simple football, a long direct ball in in front of Brian Hurley. Uh, quick hands off and Ian, Ian Maguire doing what he does best. That brilliant athleticism, that fabulous uh, support run and a nice finish with his left foot. Simple football, direct, quick hands, finish, score. Aaron O'Sullivan once again kicking it into the middle, looking for Tommy Childs. And the support play that was coming in from Killian Fahey, picked up in the end by Dara Tracy, helped out here by Kian Sheehan. Danny Neville now racing for this one with the Cork fullback, Daniel O'Mahony. Neville booted in here looking for Fahey. Instead, it's picked up by Paul Walsh, showing a good appetite for work here. They get it out as far as Rory Dean. As far as Luke Connolly taking it down one-handed and ready to go by Mike Donovan. Back to Dean again it comes. Maguire available. The obvious pass to give is to Kevin O'Donovan. Looking to pick out Brian Hartnett. Much expected from the number 10 against the other number 10, Kian Sheehan. Transferred quickly. Deneen involved. Picked up by O'Rourke. Back to Deneen again. Has had one go already at the target. And the final effort here has gone to the left. It was by Kevin O'Donovan. It's uh, Cork's second wide. Referees uh, decided it's time at this stage for a water break. So just about 20 minutes are gone. And what have you made of it so far, Pat? Uh, two evenly matched teams. Quality of football, I would say, John, leaves a lot to be desired. As a member of the forward unit department, you know, I'm looking for good forward play. And you look at the stats from Limerick and you see that not a single Limerick forward has scored from play in that first 20 minutes of play, which is very disappointing. And you look at Cox forward play and uh, John O'Rourke is the only one to have scored from play and you'll have to say that was a fortuitous goal. So forward play poor, Limerick working hard, getting the bodies back, good on the counter-attack. Um, the Cork goal was the, is the difference, really. Like I said, Rory Dean picking up a break, running directly at it, probably should have scored himself. And this was a, it was a comedy of errors, but a goal, a goal that counts. Well, I honestly thought Rory Dean was going to smack it, but well, perhaps uh, he had better ideas. Maybe he didn't fancy getting a goal himself. Well, the side, pro the side problem was that Rory has no right foot, and it was it was for a right-footed kicker because his left foot was after being blocked up. So probably did the right thing to, to put it onto John O'Rourke. But like I said, probably Limerick will be disappointed. There was two defenders on John O'Rourke plus Don Lo Sullivan, the goalie. Well, manager Ronan McCarthy has had a long, long list of injuries to deal with. Billy Lee, likewise, is missing a couple of players. But he'd be happy right now. There's just a point between them, and it's anybody's game. But like I said, Jerry, you look at the scoreboard, three scores to three scores, one, two to three points. That's a low-scoring game for perfect conditions, so you'll have to say defences on top. Aaron O'Sullivan ready to restart. Cork bring four forwards up in and around the D there to make sure there's no possibility of a short one. So he's summing up yes. what's on. The referee's telling him, get going. Towards Ian Maguire, jumping there. Robbie Burke was causing a problem or two. It's Matty Taylor eventually. A lot of tenacity now in the Limerick challenges. Roared on by the crowd here as well. Kevin Flahev hand-passing it. And the referee saw Kevin Flahev being fouled. Telling one or two of the Limerick players just to calm it down a wee bit. There certainly since the water break more intensity to uh, Limerick's play. The tackling there was ferocious. There was three guys on Kevin Flath put him under pressure. So probably see them up the tempo and up the intensity for the, for the second period of this first half. Flath had just managed to get the ball. Then the challenge comes in here. Slightly late. Was, well, it was the last challenge there by Bob Childs from Galti Grells, the 23-year-old that caught him. Former under-20 Limerick captain Bob. Ian Maguire. Point scorer already. Luke Connolly who set up the goal and here is Mike with his ball played in as far as Rory Dean. Comes back to Paul Walsh again, one of the Conturk players. Great hurling and football club. Right into almost a cul-de-sac there. Has to recycle. 
helped by John O'Rourke. Walsh again. Back to Matty Taylor. Trying to draw Limerick out in some regards. Limerick back in numbers. Just 14. one forward. Dean now trying to break through the first challenge. That of Ian Corbett. But he was caught. Free awarded to Cork. One of the things I noticed is outside of Limerick's defensive play, which is superb, and they're putting Cork on pressure, there's no target man in the full forward line. And there's, no, there's not enough movement by that full forward line by Cork. Sean Meehan now from Kish Kame in West Cork. Challenged there by Robbie Burke. Out comes Brian Hurley. Works hard. It's back as far as Flahab. So they start again. Matty Taylor. To his left is Paul Walsh. Walsh taking over. Luke Connolly leaving. Yes, it was Patrick who came in. The challenge was a very good one. Very strongly hit that time. Dara Tracy, brilliant turnover. Great physicality, great turnover. Hugh Burke was the one who got the tackle in initially. Out to Corbett again it comes. Ian Corbett. Paul Clare on the ground. Physios running in. Corbett making tracks. About to be challenged. Again, they move forward with Kian Sheehan. Killian Fahi. Fahi left footed. That's not going to make it. And left there by Michal Martin. It's a third wide by Limerick. Yeah, Limerick will be disappointed with their, like I said, with their attacking effort. Outside of the fact no forward is scoring, one of the problems they have is because they're a counter attacking team. They're bringing 14 men back inside their 45. So when they're running, when they're in transition, they just have one man up front. That's Danny Neville being marked by Daniel O'Mahony. The problem with Danny Neville being marked by Danny O'Mahony is that it, there are, there's also Sean Powter sweeping in front of him. So it's very, very difficult for them to get the ball. There's no outlet ball, but the one guy who's surrounded by two men and a, and a yellow card for Brian Hurley. Now that's two of Cox's key men, Ian Maguire and now Brian Hurley carrying yellow cards. Top right of the picture here, Brian Hurley. This was the challenge he put in, and uh, well, an awful lot in it, but he pushed the brick man over, and the referee reached and gave him a card for that. Kick out to Cork, which will be taken by Michal Martin, playing in his fourth ever championship match. Kept his goal intact in both championship games last year. One to remember against Kerry, one to forget against Tipperary from a Cork point of view. Broken down here to Bob Childs. Out to Ian Corbett. Through the centre again, he tries to come. That little channel there, Cork trying to clog it up. Kian Sheehan now, again raiding round through the centre. Fahi, Killian Fahi, Gordon Brown, got the opening point. Looking for a support player. Neville has come back to help. Pointing the way for Mike Donovan. Cork's turn now to get back. All bar Brian Hurley back behind the ball at this stage. Dara Tracy. Ian Corbett. The other member of the half back line. Bob Giles. Here's Sean O'Dee. Lots of possession, but not exactly going anywhere just yet. And that went off the Limerick player, Adrian Enright, I think, but the uh, linesman. Whatever slow lateral play cock forwards can do, Limerick can do just as well. That's kicked in right into the end line. Now can Limerick manufacture something here? Set. Yes, if uh, Tommy Childs has his way. Go down. Struggling to get it away there was Kevin Flahiv bending his back in the end is Sean Meehan. Giving it back to Ian Maguire. Now Brian Hartnett. Happiest I imagine playing in and around the middle third. Into space here for Luke Connolly. Matty Taylor. Brian Hurley. Looking to make an angle. Having to carry it back. Dean was static initially, now moving. Over towards Paul Walsh. Thought about giving it. Sold a dummy to two Limerick players. Kicked it, but then blocked by Danny Neville. A good block by Neville on that kick by Walsh. And Gordon Brown's able to take it out. Give it back to Danny Neville again. They're behind the moment by one, two to three points, as you can see. Two between them. Looking to narrow it to a one-point game. Ian Corbett raiding. Kicking. Has he made it? It's going to drop short. Martin is in there. Takes it well. Good goalkeeping. 
foul committed anyway. Comes out to Ian Maguire. Driving forward here. Gordon Brown's after him. Rory Dean across towards Brian Hurley. Good full back play initially there by Brian Fanning. But Hurley is a very dogged competitor, difficult to withstand. And Brian Fanning is absolutely furious with that. He felt that the foul was being committed by the Cork number 14. There's a lot of huffing and puffing really by both sets of forwards now. Probably this, that was a good free to give away because Cork, as far as I know, don't have a left-footed free taker. It's certainly a difficult angle for Luke Connolly, uh, a right-footed kicker. So, like I said, you know, Limerick are playing with more energy, playing with a higher tempity, tempo, and playing with greater intensity. But like I said, for they're also dominating in possession. But they'll be very, very disappointed that despite all that energy and all that possession, they're two points behind. Well, it'll be quite something special if he can point from this angle that is confronted with Luke Connolly. And has got seven goals and 42 points in his career. Guys, no trajectory, back. always going the wrong side. As you say, no left-footed free taker, and it, it was telling there. It was. I'm actually very surprised that Mark Collins isn't started because I thought when Mark Collins and Brian Hurley came on as subs against Westmeat at halftime, they were absolutely superb. Mark Collins scored 1 2, Brian Hurley scored 1 4, and I can't understand why Mark isn't on the team, whether he's carrying an injury or not. Well, you're quite right, Mark Collins has an awful lot to offer Cork football, but he's sitting on the bench. Bob Childs, Robbie Burke. Nicely in here. Carried on by Dara Tracy, oh. and Tracy has to go again. Into space as far as Robbie Burke. Gordon Brown now. Killian Fahey. Knocking it forward towards Danny Neville, winning the race this time against the other Danny, Daniel O'Mahony. Making an angle, and that one has gone the wrong side of the left-hand post. It's a fourth wide by Limerick, three wides by Cork already. Like Jar in perfect conditions, almost 30 minutes gone, and we've yet to see a forward get a point from play from either team. That's just not good enough at this level of football. Sean Meehan. Once again taken up here by Brian Hartnett, his dad uh, Michael played hurling with Middleton, the Hartnett's very well known, Pat and John, of the uh, championship hurlers, Rory Dean, John O'Rourke, now Dan Deneen, looking to get his first score. Championship hurling, and he recently got the opportunity to come in and play in the Alliance League. He'd been waiting for quite a while. Brian Hartnett, Meehan now takes the shoulder from Gordon Brown, Luke Connolly, hand passing inside. It's Powder in a good position back to Connolly. Look for another score here. Lots of different players back there, however, doing what has to be done and defending with great presence. Bob Childs that time. That's very poor attacking play. Slow, ponderous, lateral. It's all been played in front of Limerick's defenders. They're not asking any questions. You're not getting players into space. Cork with it back here. It's Maddie Taylor. Trying to go by Bob Childs. Also past Kian Sheehan. Rory Dean now. Dean kicking oh. it. Rather tamely. Straight to Aaron O'Sullivan, the substitute goalkeeper. Gordon Brown. Nobody picking up the centre forward, Killian Fahey. Tommy Childs now, and it's Limerick's turn to get moving and get downfield. Adrian Enright from Father Casey's. Played in, and the mark taken there by Killian Fahey plays on, however. It's Enright again, right on the Enright end line against uh, Kevin Flahev. Turns it back. Huber. Looking to create space for himself, he's fouled and it's going to be a free in. Transmitted there by Paul Walsh, handheld. Powder initially was after him. Again, another. That's a very, very soft free to give away and in a scoreable position. When you think about it, this will probably be Limerick's fourth score, I would imagine, and it'll be the three of the four of them will be from place balls. 
Well, the score so far, Gordon Brown did score the opening point from play. From wing he's, back. he's a left half back. The other two scored by Hugh Burke, both of them from freeze. And Hugh standing over this again. I will wait. Have you go? I'm here. I kick. All right here. Not sure what goalkeeper right. Michal Martin January is uh, doing, rooting in the, the bag right now. Michal, going to 90 now. He's going to back in. His gum oh, shield, I think, is oh, mouth guard he hadn't at one in. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, you Don't tell have, me. You have to have it. Oh, lads, you just get, you just wonder about ma modern day management and modern day players that in this rule where you're supposed to wear a mouth guard, that there's actually the goalkeeper who wasn't wearing a mouth guard. That's, that's absolutely unnecessary and uncalled for. Now he's put on his mouth guard after 32 and a half minutes of the game. Hugh Burke is going to take the resultant free kick. <laughs> Mihal reunited with the mouth guard. And all ready to go. This is a player who got two goals and 24 points in this year's league. When Limerick reached the semi finals of Division 3. Cork retained their Division 2 status. Neither side excelling in this match so far. Hugh Burke hasn't done half bad with his freeze. Three of them all pointed. And now it's a one-point game. One, two to four points. I suppose Limerick will look back and say, look, they conceded a soft goal in the first few minutes. They could have left the heads drop, but they haven't. They've taken the game to Cork over the last half an hour. They've been the better team, but they will be disappointed at the fact that with given the possession, they're, they're still a point down. Cork haven't scored in the second quarter of this match yet. Not since the break. This man, Ian Maguire, got asked for it. That's uh, going to be free on the 45 meter line. This is the why. As he was making tracks, he was held back by Tommy Childs. It'll give a free to Brian Hurley. Brian, who has been beset by injuries over the last number of years. Very talented footballer. Kicks truly, kicks well, kicks his second. And Cork extend their lead here. They're ahead by one, three to four points with about a minute to go to half time. Lots of advice and shouting coming in from the stands, as you can hear in the background. Aaron O'Sullivan changes direction. He was looking out for uh, Dara Tracy to try and win that. Tracy knocks it forward, but it's Ian Maguire who manages to get it. Challenged by Hugh Burke, helped out by Sean Powter. Across here by Sean Meehan as far as Matty Taylor. Picks out John O'Rourke. A lot of work to do to get this ball forward. There are gaps just in over a whole group of players between the middle sector as it were and those in the full back line but those gaps aren't being exploited Sean Powter running going past Tommy Giles very pacey man into the D dancing his chances of getting a score here and he's got one Sean Powter comes up with a good here at last, Joe, a bit of imagination, a bit of flair, and a bit of pace. Powder recognised the, the, the space in front of him, put on the afterburners, and got a score. And as you said, yes, Limerick have the bodies back, but there are still plenty, plenty pockets of space that Cork could exploit that haven't been, except for Powder on that occasion. Five minutes of additional time now being played. Gordon Brown told to bring it back. Here's Sean O'Dee. Kian Sheehan. Going right across his own back line, as it were. Now, can Limerick make some headway? Coming deep to collect is Robbie Burke. Challenged by John O'Rourke. Fahi Han passes it back here. Brian Fanning here. Burst forward again, links up with Adrian Enright. Limerick looking for the next score in this match. Dara Tracy. Here's Ian Corbett. Ah, oh, terrible. Man. And the final ball is a very poor one by Corbett, and he's the first to acknowledge that. Adrian Enright is in there challenging, just trying to make it difficult for the Cork backs to get the ball out. But it's out with Matty Taylor again. Boiling! 
and Taylor can carry it forward here now. Corbett is backtracking, O'Rourke's coming forward. Here's Dan Deneen. And Dano gets it out as far as Ian Maguire. Taking a return here is Walsh back to Maguire again. Very wide, forced out there by Dara Tracy. It's Maguire, very strong physical player. Did he foul the ball there? Limerick player certainly thought he threw it up and got it himself. Then there's a jersey tout, and now eventually it is going to be a free out. Again, that's just Cork at their very worst, carrying the ball into a crowd and being forced to overcarry in this occasion. Too often that's happening, they're being forced to overcarry, they're being turned over, or most occasions they're being forced to recycle it back again all the way across the field with no threat, no imagination, no penetration in that attack at all. Absolutely none. Brian Fanning. Oh, the three guardee in this uh, Limerick team and he knows the minute he let that ball away that it was a, a very poor ball to give out pressure will be back on him and the rest of the Limerick defenders immediately ready to kick it is going to be Matty Taylor Paul Walsh Very, very deep and unchallenged is Rory Dean from Bantry Blues. To the man who got that last score, Sean Powter. Always has that little bit of daring, a bit of imagination, a bit of excellence about him. Two from two for Sean Powter. Really well done, and he's made it one five to four points. Remember this, I mean, the reason why, one of the main reasons why Tipperary beat Cock last year is that Powter was missing for that Munster final. Powter, after a long layoff at injury, was man of the match in that game against, against Kerry in the semi final. Absolutely tremendous. Burst of pace. Doesn't it say at all in the modern game that the biggest scoring threat comes from the number two, the right cornerback? 90 seconds of the injury time remaining as it's picked up by Kean Lynch and he's dispossessed and Cork are counter-attacking again with Rory Dean right and left he's got support players Dean up to the D still Dean and then he loses it but manages to get the ball away out as far as Matty Taylor and that is a very good score by Matty Taylor Rory Dean seemed to have lost his way completely but Taylor was able to pick up the pieces there and it's now 1-6 to 4 points Three pints of, of that Cox total comes from defend, the defenders and one pint from play from Ian Maguire at midfield. It just goes to show their penetrations coming from their counter-attacks and from their runners coming from deep. Brian Fanning. Luke Connolly's chasing after him. Not stopping him, however. Robbie Burke. Gordon Brown now. Bob Childs. Saw a whole group of Cork players just in front of him, just decided to halt and wait. But as you can see, we've only got about another 15 seconds or so to go before the five minutes of additional time will have elapsed. Another soft free being given away. Very soft free. It's a late, late free to Limerick at the end of this first half. He and Sheehan making the running there. The 26-year-old uh, player who comes from Newcastle West. So once again, it brings Hugh Burke out. And this will narrow it a little bit. Now needs to make this. He's their only scorer among the forwards, and the only other player to score was Gordon Brown, the very first point of the match after under 30 seconds. Up into the air. And it's gone the wrong side of the upright. That's five wides by Limerick. And the referee blows for half time at the end of all of that. Both sides have a lot of room for improvement. The object of the exercise is to try and get into the Munster final in two weeks' time. Brian, she Brian Hurley has got two points for Cork. Robbie Burke has worked hard for Limerick without getting the necessary scores. But at the break here, it's Limerick four points. It's Cork in front by a goal and six. And we'll be back here at the LIT Gaelic Grounds in Limerick in about 15 minutes' time. Supervalue believe in community. And community includes everyone. That one day is what you live for. Winning the whole thing is what you dream of. 
pretty surreal, so it is just realising that you know sometimes when you dream hard enough, they do come true. true, true.
and you're very welcome back to the LIT Gaelic Grounds in Limerick. It's Chair Canning with Pat Spillan, and we've got this monster semi-final game between Limerick and Cork. Uh, one, six to four points, the current position. Don't see any changes just yet made by either team, but is there one? Uh, somebody has got to be, but they may well be. 24 for Limerick uh, is a change, I believe. Brian Donovan, number 24 for Mullaline. He comes on. And uh, it could well be that's number 14 who's gone. So there he is, big man. So they'll be hoping that that has the desired effect. Both sides looking for bigger improvement in terms of the quality of the football on offer. Pat, we didn't see a point scored by either set of forwards in the match so far. The score is coming from elsewhere. Sure, it's not both sides just looking for an improvement. All the spectators here are looking for an improvement. We're looking for an improvement. That was a first half that was forgettable to be quite honest uh, it was a game where defenses dominated it was where the fear of losing seemed to supersede the, supersede the idea that, of, of a team going out to win and like i said the statistic that 12 forwards played in that first half and not one forward got a point from play that's inexcusable for this this level of football so hopefully the game will open up in the second half we'll see a better attacking play more imagination more flair more penetration brian fanning is the limerick fullback Getting that ball across towards Sean O'Dea from Kiltini Drumkeen. Cork's defence trying to deal with this. There was a little bit of holding. Matty Taylor ready to take the resultant free kick. Back to his goalkeeper from Nemo Rangers, Michal Martin. Again, what you saw there, Joe, was, was Daniel O'Mahony attacking the ball, first to the ball. He's, he's put on a great display, a defensive display at fullback for one so young. Rory Dean. Trying to shrug off the attention there of Brian Donovan. The referee, however, saw a foul committed, and uh, it means that Cork will have a free kick. This is where Donovan was reaching in, caught uh, Dean by the shoulder. Matty Taylor, point scorer in the first half. With the points coming from the likes of uh, Sam uh, Sean Port, uh, Powter, who got two, and uh, Matty Taylor, who got one. John O'Rourke, who got the opening goal after three minutes, a little under, kicking this one, so he becomes the first forward to kick a point from open play in the match. So a goal and a point for John O'Rourke now, 1-7 to four points. You can imagine that that's a cause of celebration after 37 minutes of an inter-county senior championship that the first forward to score for point from play was 37 minutes. But good penetration, good point from John O'Rourke. That's a goal and a point, even if the goal was a bit fortuitous, it still counts. Dara Tracy kicking it out, picking, up, picking it up is Brian Donovan. On as far as Danny Neville, there's good pace in this attack, it's a good looking shot, it's a fine score. One team scores from open play, another team scores from open play, and Danny Neville is the first Limerick forward to score in this game during the open play section. So it's 1-7 now to 5 points. And what you had during that attack, you had pace, you had penetration. Great support from us and a lovely finish. Now, that was penetration and pace, lovely finish. And in the first two minutes, three minutes of play, we've had more football in the first three minutes than we had in the entire first half. So here's hoping for the next 35 or 33 minutes. Kevin O'Donovan hauled down. Sean Meehan ready to take it forward again against Donovan. That was Paul Walsh laying it off. Dean involved. Good run here, it's Powder again, right up to the D, hold down there by Danny Neville, and Neville pleads his case, but all in vain, it's going to be a free in for Cork, and a chance for Brian Hurley to pop over another one. This is another great run by a really super yep. player, the 23-year-old from Douglas. And George, the last time we saw him in action, like I said, was in the Munster semi-final against Kerry, he was man of the match that day. And after 38 minutes, he's the man of the match of this game as well. His pace is unbelievable. And what he's doing is he's playing the game on his terms. He's forcing Danny Neville to run after him rather than he defending on Danny Neville. Easiest free kick that uh, Brian Hurley has had today. But it's three from three for him. So 1-8 now to five points. So the scores are mounting up. Yeah, and that will worry, that will worry Limerick now. A six-point gap, given the fact that they have so little scoring penetration or scoring threat up front, is a big gap at this stage. Aaron O'Sullivan has come in early in the game as a replacement goalkeeper for Donald O'Sullivan, kicking that one. Ian Maguire in the thick of it. 
Maguire held onto the ball too long. The free kick is taken by Bob Childs. It's up as far as Avery and Enright. Enright now penetrating here, looking for a support player. Kicked it in the end, and he puts the ball wide. Probably really, just, he was between two minds, I think. He was, and probably justice was done because I think he overplayed the ball anyway. But like I said, indecisive in attack, poor decision making, and a very, very poor wide. Six wides now by Limerick during this game. Early stages of the second half. Brian Hartnett back here as far as Kevin Flav. Hartnett again. Dean. A lot of physical power there in the middle third for Cork. All the way down to Dan Deneen. From Keel Namartra. Deneen. Raiding well. Dangerous move here. And he carries it too long. Frustration for him. Still getting used to the pace and the requirements at inter-county level. Yeah. yeah, good direct ball in from Rory Dean. Well won by Dan Deneen, but great defensive play here, forcing forcing Dan to overcome. Two on one. Great defending by Limerick. Killian Fahey for Limerick now. The centre half forward for Dara Tracy, the midfielder. Danny Neville was waiting for it. It's still Tracy. Lays it off here as far as Killian Fahey. And Fahey then, with the referee blowing his whistle, I think, for an earlier foul. And it's going to be a free in for Limerick, so they get a chance of getting their second point of the second half. It's noticeable as the game goes on, with, with players tiring, that the play opens up a bit, that there's more space there this half. Well, it should make for a little bit more entertainment. Hugh Burke is ready to hit this one. He got three points in the first half. It's only his sixth ever championship game. One of the Adair players. Again, he's a right-footed kicker here. So, like Luke Connolly in the first half, this is a, an awkward angle, a tough assignment for him. It is because it's surprising nowadays. Most teams carry a right-footed free taker and a left-footed free taker. But Hugh Burke did well. He did remarkably well. Four points. Actually, he was a player that really impressed me in their victory over Watford. He got one six. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. So they need a big game from. Oh, big loss. Ian Kylie is coming on, and Sean, Sean Powder, Powder withdrawn. And, and we know, all know about Sean Powder having such hard luck with injuries. Is it hamstring? I'm not sure. Usually, but that's a big, big blow for Cork, particularly if they win this game and they're going to be in amongst the final in less than two weeks' time. A huge loss, huge loss. Big their, worry. Their best player, Rory Dean, following that foul. In as far as Paul Walsh. Walsh going forward, still there, lobbing it back to Maguire, Hurley was calling for it, Walsh taking it up again, They're giving Limerick a chance however to get back, get into position, if they can challenge to win the ball back, oh. work goes on too long and Limerick did well but Cork, poor play by Cork. You said it, that's the worst of Cork's attacking play in evidence there, that slow ponderous build up and carrying the ball into the tackle either being forced to turn over or in this case over carrying. We saw it so many times in last year's month's final with Tipperary, they haven't ever learned. Sheehan kicking, beating the attempted block of Kevin Flahel, but he's put that ball out off a defender and it's gone for a 45. I think that's the first 45 we've had in the match. Keen Sheehan from Newcastle West. And have made it his debut at this level seven years ago. In there alongside Kevin Flav. And they're all enjoying it, it would appear. Isn't that the hard look with injuries with key players? You have uh, Killian O'Connor, Mayo's key player out injured probably for the season. Question marks over Michael Murphy tomorrow. And if Sean Powell was missing and Cock Reach wants the final, it's a terrible blow. It's a huge blow because he's been absolutely tremendous in that 42 minutes he was on the field. Along with the loss, by the way, the goalkeeper has uh, decided to come up, Aaron O'Sullivan, to replicate what Donal O'Sullivan was able to do. And there's got to be another change. Coming in here will be uh, number 25, James Nocton. And 21 is also coming in, Killian Ryan. I'm not surprised really because their half forward line today has been ineffective, no score, but the, the two wing forwards, Keane Sheen and Adrian Henry. Brian Donovan came on as a sub against Watford and he's a powerful runner. He was very impressive that day. And even in, in, 
you saw in that first attack there when they scored the point was Brian Dunvin was involved in the, in the lead up play good kick by the goalkeeper he's doing exactly what Donald O'Sullivan was able to do and Aaron O'Sullivan is kicked over the 45 and Limerick hearts are raised because now it's only 1-8 to 1-7 4 points the margin and the Limerick goal would really turn this thing around short kick out Kian Kiley, the one who first got his hands on the ball there, and now it's Sean Meehan. Well, as you say, the absence of Sean Powder now is quite enormous when you consider the other players missing, the likes of Killian O'Hanlon, Alan Brown, Liam O'Donovan, Sean White, Horace Shanley's missing, Paul Ring's missing, Cahal O'Mahony and Colm O'Callaghan all missing because of injury. And then there are those retirements like Paul Kerrigan out there and Lockery and Tomas Clancy and Kieran Sheehan recently. Big long list of names. Kevin O'Donovan kicking it into space. It's Kylie, Kian Kylie of Ballancolic who gets there first, then Dan Deneen. Back as far as Kevin Flahev. If they want to get to the monster final against either the favourites, Kerry, or the defending champion, Superary, they're going to have to work hard. And they need to be more disciplined. And that's a foul there committed by Killian Ryan. That was, and you know, I don't know, was Rory really going anywhere? It was a needless free again. Safa. More changes coming up. Kevin O'Driscoll is on for Paul Walsh, I think, is it? That's exactly it. there will be a free kick which will be taken by Brian Hurley he's given it plenty of air and the umpires yes. concur it is a good score it's a second point of the second half by Brian Hurley his fourth in all one nine to seven points gives them a little bit more breathing room eleven and a half minutes into the second half well collected that time by Brian Hartnett. That's the young player we know him to be. Gives it off to Rory Dean. Following in here is O'Rourke. He scored one. Oh. He might have had another one there. But that ball has gone over the bar instead. It's a well, goal on a point now by John O'Rourke. I thought he was going to billow the net that time. Yeah, what's noticeable now with Paul Walsh gone off is Brian Hartness has gone to midfield and won that great ball there. That was good, good attacking play, lovely layoff from uh, Rory Dean, good support running from John O'Rourke. I think he'll have been disappointed. There was a goal chance he should have converted. That's a goal missed. Mike Donovan hitting this one out. Out as far as Killian Ryan, who conceded that last free kick. Supported by James Nocton. Gordon Brown. Ready to advance again is Sean O'Dee probing. Moving forward here with James Nocton again. This time it's Brian Donovan. First of the outfield subs to come on. Had the misfortune to have to replace their goalkeeper so early on in the game. Danny Neville. <gasps> Neville! Oh! It should have been in the back of the net and he knows it. What an opportunity for Limerick. It's Danny Neville who's never scored a championship goal. And this is where he created a really good space himself. Got by Kevin Flahev, took it on strongly and missed yes, big awesome. time. And, and you know, even though they put up a huge tally against w Watford in the first round, I, 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 I counted in that game that they missed seven goal scoring chances. And that was their first goal scoring chance and it should have been put away. What's noticeable now, remember, is that with, with Sean Potter gone off, it's Kevin Flahev who's now picking up Danny Neville. And while Sean Potter beat Danny Neville, Danny Neville had the better from there. Danny Neville has blistering pace, he's an exciting corner forward. This goes all the way back as far as goalkeeper Michal Martin. Daniel O'Mahony. Out it comes to Kean Kiley. Playing his fourth ever championship match. Kevin O'Driscoll, a much more experienced player. Brian Hartnett on his debut. Down as far as Luke Connolly. Supported by Matty Taylor. Goes by the first man and the second. Lays it back here to O'Rourke again and then coming across is the fullback Brian Fanning to intervene slipping it forward here as far as Dara Tracy and Tracy now getting the rest of the Limerick players to move with him in unison and try and take the challenge to court they need a score Danny Neville who missed that goal opportunity Neville raiding about to be confronted there by Kevin O'Donovan he got it and he's got a very good score a second point by Danny Neville 
both of them coming in the second half. 14 minutes in, it's now 1-10 to 8 points. And that's Limerick at their best, the quick counter-attack. That was an unforced error by Cork, a lazy, bad pass by, by Dan Deneen. No movement in Cork's attack. Quick counter-attack from Limerick in defence. And as you can see, Danny Neville, now that Sean Powder's gone off, is reaping a bit of his. And he's attacking, running at that Cork defence. And we saw that against Westmead. When Westmead ran at Cork in that first half, that Cork defence were very susceptible. Like I said, that's a Cork defence that conceded 18 points on average in the league. Neville did well. We also saw Brian Fanning there with that wonderful intervention down at the other end. Goalkeeper for Cork coming out with the tee, ready to put it on the 20 metre line. 15 minutes into the second half, Cork with a, an injured player. And, and Brian Murphy is coming on. You see his bad communication with the Cockman. He was injured, but Brian Murphy, the soap, wasn't ready, so he was instructed. Uh, Daniel O'Man, he was instructed to throw himself down until such time as Brian Murphy can come back in. That's a big loss because that's Cox's two best defenders in the full back line. Daniel O'Man, who was superb all day, and Sean Potter gone off. A big worry again for Cork. So Brian Murphy comes in. Well, Nemo Rangers player, first championship match for him, another debut on so. And he's gone in there and he's picking up uh, James Nocton. Still 20 minutes to go here. Kevin O'Driscoll collecting that one, taking it back again. About to be challenged by James Nocton. Brian Hartnett. Looking to enjoy a bit more possession now in the middle of the park alongside Ian Maguire for Cork. Luke Connolly, for yep. whom always big things are expected, but he holds on too long and nothing's happening. He's got to make things happen and he knows it. Like two things there, Joe. One, the energy and the tackling and the work rate of, of the Limerick fellas without the ball. But secondly, no tempo, no energy, no pace, no movement in attack. Just ponderous. And that's what Brown. happens. Back here as far as Tommy Childs. Childs going backwards under a little bit of pressure this time. And Limerick happy to kick it all the way back towards Sean O'Dee, the corner back. Ian Corbett had a very good first half, but a lot of very good hard work with tackles. Back it comes to Killian Ryan. Now Brian Donovan. Slipping it out here to Killian Fahey. Not getting players into key positions just to make sure nothing is easy for Limerick. Can't go through the middle. Having to play around the edges here, Corbett out as far as Bob Childs again looking to raid down that flank tracked there by John O'Rourke all the way back into the centre to Derek Tracy now what this time Danny Neville Lee Ryan picked up by Neville again slipped in to Corbett back out towards Nocton Jared Tracy, somebody's got to go there and have a, a little bit of daring, it was Gordon Brown, the referee does give him the free kick, big Limerick cheers in the background is to make it a four point game again. Like one thing you have to admire about, about Limerick's attacking play there, they were patient, they were composed, they were bringing good wit into the attack, they gave it to Gordon Brown, he turned down the corner as a win for it. Like Cork would be disappointed, all 15 players were back inside the 45, probably there wasn't a score on and they concede, another sloppy free and that's going to be, what is it, that's going to be f out of Limerick's 9 points, I take this as a score, out of Limerick's 9 points, 5 have come from, 5 have come from freeze. And the point here is Pat, because of some uh, mouthing by Cork, it was brought right up to the 20 metre line, so a very elementary kick for Hugh Burke, 5 points from freeze. One thing that's very noticeable, Ger, uh, is the two, particularly the two subs, James Nocton and Brian Donovan, come on. They've brought physicality, great athleticism. You know, they're two big units, they're two strong runners, and they've made a big, big difference to Limerick's attacking play. Referee had a look at his watch. We've played 19 minutes of the second half. I imagine the water break will be coming up pretty soon, and it'll be a pretty crucial one for both these teams.
Kevin O'Donovan now. Turn him out, turn him out, turn him out. Both sides needing to take stock in a while. Can Cork finish off this move with a score? It's Dean. Inside it comes. And there's the new man who's just come in. Keith Kiley raising a white flag. His first ever score in championship football coming here in Limerick. The water break has come. And it's Cork 111. It's Limerick 9 points. Yeah, I think, you know, Cork are probably five points ahead. I, I, there were six. And while Limerick are playing a lot of good football, at the moment you will still have to say that Cork, despite the loss of Coulter and despite the loss of Daniel Manning, probably are still slightly the better team and look to have, look like they're going to win the game. The one thing you always know is about you know, Cork in Division 2. It's a Division 2 team against the Division 3 team. You usually find that the conditioning and the fitness of the higher Division team is usually better. I mean, we've had 14, Ger. 14 championship games played to date. This is the 15th. And only in one instance, in only one instance, did a team from a lower division beat a team from a higher division. And that was Wexford beating Wicklow. So, you know, if you go according to Forum, you know, the higher division team beats the lower division team. But Lim Limerick are, are playing well. They're battling hard. But attack-wise, ah, they need more in attack. Billy Lee having uh, these opportunities in this one minute of a sus to just try and reorganize things. Keen O'Neill is doing all the talking down there rather than Ronan McCarthy. Of course, we should under uh, em emphasize once again, uh, of course, this is knockout, Pat. There's no back door this year, like last year. It's it's cruel, it's tough, it's rotten in so many It's respects. absolutely crazy, Joe. When you think about it, the improvement that Billy Lee has done with Limerick, and they're improving every since 2020, since that hammer, since 2019. They improved in 2020. They've been improving this year. Say they're beaten today. It's almost seven months before they'll play another competitive game. How the hell can a team improve their standards, close the gap to the top teams if they haven't got competitive matches? The system is wrong, and football has been unfairly unfairly used this year because hurling had the back door no football back door can't understand that's paul maher who's just come on for limerick that's their fifth and final substitution unless of course uh, the goalkeeper is still regarded as a temporary one which could be free kick for limerick bob childs taking it ian corbett limerick need the scores quickly five points adrift not any longer that is a beautiful kick solidly hit with the outside of the boot lovely direction on it and it's 111 to 9 points thanks to Ian Corbett oh look this guy is a class act a Rolls Royce of a player look against Watford from centre back he scored 1-2 that's a classic that's as good a point as you'll see on the run outside the right foot kicking from straight in front of the goal that's a difficult skill to execute he did it very well two years ago in Porky Reen in the same competition Munster semi-final Cork beat Limerick by 21 points. Limerick could only score six points that night. Three of them were frees from their goalkeeper. What a change situation we have here. 111 to 10 points. Luke Connolly now, referee, gives a, a late whistle, and that's a very poor kick up by, by free by Luke Connolly, giving that ball away to the new man in Paul Barr. And Limerick raid again here. James Nocton. Challenged there by Kevin O'Donovan, unfairly challenged, down went Nocton, free kick awarded. And, and again, Cork looking to be rattled past. And not for the first time, a non-forced error, which is cardinal sin, a non-forced error. No one marking Luke Connolly all the time in the world, and he kicks it straight to a Limerick player. There's no excuse for that, that's absolutely it. But then you look at the stats, Joe. We're 56 minutes in and one cock forward, one cock forward has scored from play. Hugh Burke is ready to hit this one. Five points already converted from five kicks, I think. Sun comes out. Limerick will be singing if this one goes over. There's only going to be a goal between the teams if he can make it into the hands of goalkeeper Michal Martin. Didn't quite have the legs that time. Out to Kevin Flahev, pressurised by Danny Neville, coming in to try and pick it up there. Under a lot of pressure was Ian Maguire. It runs out in the end there. Out as far as Brian Hartnett. Limerick are the ones showing remarkable appetite. Cork now have to withstand all of this and stand up strongly if they're to try and get themselves into the Munster final and put on a decent showing against either Kerry or Tipperary. This comes out to Kevin O'Donovan. 
of Donovan Reading and the manner in which Sean Powder was before he was injured and forced out of the game. Comes out to Key and Kylie, kick the last point for Cork just before the water break. Has a support player, doesn't use Brian Hurley that time. Recycles back as far as O'Donovan again. It reaches Brian Murphy. John O'Rourke now, a goal and two points to his name already. Coming in here is Brian Hartnett, the big Douglas man. Looking to try and give it to uh, Luke Connolly, but they managed to somehow hold on to it. And it's with John O'Rourke. Dan Deneen. Sure, that, now, that attack has now gone 50 metres backwards. Court need to hold on, make sure that they get a scorer into the right position here. It's patient, yeah. It's not very attractive for a lot of people, but if it comes at the end of it with a score, Cork will settle for that. They're denying Limerick possession all this while. Maguire over as far as Matty Taylor. Slow, very, very ponderous. Deneen involved. John O'Rourke. O'Driscoll getting it over here as far as Key and Kylie. And that pass in the end goes towards Luke Connolly. Oh, Struggled to keep it in play. It and they've lost it. And they've lost it. But your composure and keeping possession is all very well. But you must be asking questions of the defence. The Dubs can do it for four and five minutes, but they're looking for a runner coming off the shoulder. They're looking for to get a player into, into pockets of space. Cocker just aimlessly recycling ball, not asking any questions of the Limerick defence. Corbett, who got that marvellous point a little while ago. So now they're looking to carry it up through Paul Maher. Two players on his right hand side in support. One of them is Mike Donovan. The other one here is Killian Fahey. Nicely in. Brian Donovan picking it up. Ready to go forward, Donovan. Against Dan Deneen. Angle tight. Little block on it. It's gone for a 45. Good defending that time by Deneen. Back there playing his part in what is his uh, championship debut. And at last, Cork have decided to bring on Mark Collins instead of Luke Connolly, who unfortunately it wasn't Luke's day today. Like I said, Mark came on as a sub against Westmead. was very, very impressive. Scored 1-2 that day. Look, Mark brings leadership qualities. La Mark is a free taker. Mark is a damn, damn good player to can play either in the centre of the field or in the forward position. So Connolly goes and uh, Mark Collins from Castle Haven comes on. And Josh Ryan is the next one coming in for Limerick. And that's the entire uh, Limerick half forward line now to place, which I'm not surprised. But the subs so far have really added to Limerick in the second half. Uh, full of energy, high tempo, taking the game to Cork, running at Cork. The goalkeeper, Aaron O'Sullivan, kicked a 45 earlier on. This, as you can see, slightly right of centre. Got the last one brilliantly. This time it's a lower trajectory right into the body of goalkeeper Michal Martin who has managed to keep his goal intact out to Matty Taylor. As far as Mark Collins, this man can make things happen. Brian Hartnett. Taylor again. Here's John O'Rourke. About 11 well, maybe uh, 10 minutes still to go, but uh, probably 11 or 12 when you add in uh, stoppage time. Mark Collins plays hurling with Douglas and uh, is a colleague there of Brian Hartnett. But uh, a football, of course, with Castle Haven, his dad's club. Kevin O'Donovan all the way down in there towards Deneen, who's worked very hard. Rory Dean. Players waiting for it. Keen Kylie trying to dart inside here. Kylie goes. Dean comes looking for O'Rourke. Here's a chance again, and he fists it up and over the bar. John O'Rourke's got a goal and three, and they've been very, very important scores. And he looks like he's got a cramp now as well into the bargain. It's 112 to 10 points. Rory Dean is not scoring. But he's on the ball a lot, he's intelligent, he's laying it off well. The only thing is, I often see about Rory, he just lacks that little bit of confidence. He got the ball initially 30 metres out, should have put the ball over the bar. You know, they had to earn, you know, they walked through the lines, it was hard to earn, but they got a score. And John O'Rourke still remains the only cock forward after 62 minutes to have scored from play. Rory Dean receiving attention, as you can see here. Looks to be a facial injury. He was one of the uh, three 
one of the goal scorers got one of the three goals against Limerick when they met in 2019. The other two were scored by uh, Brian Hurley. Actually, do you know when, when at the start of the league when we had high scoring games and everyone said it's a new dawn for Gaelic football, we're going to have attacking football? Forget it, after 62 and a half minutes, one forward from each team has scored from play. One forward from each team has scored from play. Think about it. As Brian Fanning carries it out here and he's the full back. If the forwards can't do it, he's prepared to go up and help out. Hugh Burke has been doing it from freeze, now from open play. Hit that one up into the air, trying to retain it, fist it out. Still retained by Limerick, and then lost. And in the end, there was a foul there committed by Josh Ryan. Big Josh, huge man. Michael Hurley now prepared to come on, I'd say, instead of Rory Dean, I would imagine, is it? It's Michael Hurley, anyway, definitely coming on. Well, Michael, younger brother of uh, Brian Hurley. Matty Taylor. Six and a half minutes, the clock would suggest, remaining of the 70 minutes. Five points the margin. Brian Hartnett. Running forward ahead of him was Sean Mee in his centre half back, and Hartnett just decides to play it short. Price Dean involved, Kylie Price helping out. Now Mark Collins made a big difference when he came on against Westmead in that relegation match at Porky Queen a few weeks ago. Back to a recovered, well, not it's not a recovered, or John O'Rourke, it's uh, Kevin O'Driscoll involved. Now Kevin Flahov. And that ball's gone up and over the bar, and it's Kylie once again. Well, that's a second point for him here. Doing very, very nicely. A lot of hard work on his part, and he's most definitely made a difference in at the receiving end of this pass here from Kevin Flyer, and it's now 113 to 10. Oh, yeah. by six. Certainly, Cox defenders on the counter attack have, have impressed the times today. Uh, again, you look at again the likes of Carrier against the top team. That was a goal chance that should have been put away. That's two goal scoring chances now they've had in the second half that weren't put away. Michael you need Hurley. to be ruthless. Michael Hurley comes on anyway for his 13th championship match. Dean, back here it comes as far as Kevin O'Driscoll. Now Corker raiding and it's Maguire. Dan Deneen feeds it cleverly. Oh, he's Johnny just come on. And Michael Hurley hits the post and it's eventually gone out and it's gone wide. I think that is just the first wide by Cork in the second half. It is indeed. So I suppose we can say that their shooting accuracy is very good. No, no wide. But what you can see now, Joe, in the last couple of minutes is Cox fitness, Cox conditioning, you know, playing a higher level of football is standing to them now. Definitely, they look the better team. Six points ahead, and it, I think that's on a saleable lead. Limerick's Mike Donovan, cornerback, felt a blow there as that ball was coming out. Right now, at the other end, it's James Nocton. Nocton stopped in his tracks. He's played well. Free so, kick taken as far as Brian Donovan. Six between them, a goal needed by Limerick, up into the air, however, that ball goes by uh, the boot of Gordon Brown. And in the end, comes to naught, third wide of the second half by Limerick, and they're eight in all. Yeah, that's eight wides and four into the goalie's hands during the course of the game. This time it uh, looks to be Brian Hartnett who is receiving the attention. I suppose looking back at it, when Cork, if Cork are looking for positives, you know, certainly their defence, which have been much maligned and people said is the Achilles heel and there's question marks about them, you will have to say that their defence stood up very well in this game. Sean Powder was absolutely magnificent, Daniel O'Mahony was magnificent, Kevin Flahab driving forward, Keane Kiley now on as a sub, Matty Taylor, they've all been good, particularly good at the counter-attack and remember that's a defence of line that have only, Danny Neville is the only forward to score from play against them, so... They've done well, the Cork defenders. Dan Deneen got a yellow car there. I think it's because he was involved in an incident with Mike Donovan, from which Donovan went down. He's back up on his feet now, back playing. And here is the man who got that card, Dan Deneen. Rory Dean, in as far as Brian Hurley, should pop Point. it over the bar. That he does. That's his first to come from over. 
today. It's his fifth in all, and he makes it 114 to 10 points. And Cork look to be and pretty by much the way, while we're, while we're looking at Dan Deneen and showing great energy, worked hard. If anyone ever wants to go on YouTube and see the two best goals ever scored in colleges football, 2015 All Ireland Senior Colleges final, Dan Deneen scored two goals against Ratang, and that they, that they were the two best solo goals, individual goals I've probably ever seen. Check it out, Dan Deneen's goals in 2015. Brian Fanning. Oh, intervening here is Brian Hurley. Waiting for Matty Taylor to move. Matty does. Back to Kevin O'Driscoll. Ian McGuire. Cork now just really playing out the time here. Just over in two minutes to go to the end of the 70. And then a few more to be added on. And then it'll be a case of which side will they face in the final itself. Favourites, Kerry, the most likely. Sean Meehan. Deneen's available on this near side, ready to run and ready to move, and he does. Brian Hurley. It's Michael, his brother, takes it up. Michael Hurley back into his brother. Brotherly love. Another one for Brian Hurley. That's six for him. Made for him by his younger brother. Yeah, like I said, Limerick, you know, who are a counter-attacking team, who've worked hard all through, but they've expended a huge amount of energy. This is a hot day, a big pitch. It's very hard to keep that counter-attacking running game go sustaining for 70-something minutes. And to be quite honest, they're out on their feet now. Cox conditioning, Cox fitness, and Cox experience from playing a higher level of football is now showing to them. Showing right now for Limerick is Gillian Ryan. Helped out by James Norton. Then Brian Donovan. Keep it alive over there, but it's Maddie Taylor. Pops a high one there from uh, Paul Maher. Play continues. Michael Burley as far as his brother Brian. Well, they combined for the last score. Here they go again. Waiting to face Nemo Rangers in the uh, 2020 Cork County football final when the clubs are able to play championship again. Pile up of bodies here now. But it's looking like the same old story from Limerick's point of view. They got to within four points a couple of times in the second half. They had that very near miss by Danny Neville. Had that gone in, who knows what might have happened, Pat? They've been, ever since that goal, despite all their effort and despite dominating possession, they have been chasing the game. And unfortunately, they're just their scoring chances, their scoring execution, their shot execution, their efficiency just hasn't been good enough and has left them down. So despite all the effort, they haven't converted that possession into scores on the board. And that's where it counts, John. And Michael Hurley that time deemed to have hold, held on too long, even though he looked to be fouled. So we're into five minutes of additional time. Value for money for the fans who have been able to come back to the Gaelic grounds this afternoon to see this uh, monster semi. Ian Corbett. And he's ready to go, but Drew has done much frustration for him. And you understand that. It's uh, Brian Hartnett who's got to see a yellow card on his first start in the championship for Cork footballers. We've we'll seen plenty of him in future years. Corbett no. kicking it in. Michal Martin touching it out as far as Sean Meehan. And Cork once again keep their goal intact. Third championship match in a row now that they've done that. Kevin Flahov. Brian Hurley. As far as Mark Collins. Dan Deneen. No pace or urgency at this stage. A matchup not too many highs, that's for sure. Cork will be pleased, however, to have two weeks now in which to prepare for a monster final. 
Sean Meehan. Galloping forward again here. Nice turn of pace. Good control. Good use of possession as well into Hurley. Now able to take a return. Now can he finish with a score here? Well, that's a very good point. A first ever in championship football by Sean Meehan from Kish Kame in West Cork. Lovely score. 116 to 10 points. All his own work showed good composure and good finishing right at the end. And isn't this the beauty of modern day football? Two cock forwards have scored from play. Four cock defenders have scored from play today. And it's where cock strength has been today. That that defense, that counter-attacking, that pace, that, that great transition play coming out of defense. They've been very good, the cock defense today. I've been very, very impressed with them. Danny Neville carrying this one forward. A couple of minutes still to go. Looking to get one goal opportunity, maybe. And the referee sees a foul right there on the edge of the... Limerick. Oh my god! Oh my god. Brendan Cawley oh from man. Kildare. Oh this is what was happening oh here. Pushing the back there by Ian McGuire as the ball was coming in and the referee was onto it quickly. Umpire Lich. Well, there you go. It's uh, Josh Ryan. It's number 26. The 23 year old from Ula. Looking to try and breach the court cover and give them about something to cheer about on their way home from the Gaelic grounds. Looking for a goal. Everybody in Cork against him and pushed up and over and out for a 45 by goalkeeper Michal Martin. He will not be beaten. Well, even though he had a whole lot of bodies right behind him, Michal Martin is actually a very, very good shot stopper. Anybody who's watched him in the county championships in Cork will know that. 45. All the way out as far as Bob Childs. Tracy trying to hold on to it. Helped out there by Killian Ryan. Worked in. It's Tracy again. Ian Corbett, oh, it's a point by Ian Corbett. A tricky one for the goalkeeper to contain, but up and over. And a second point by Ian Corbett in this match. Isn't he an outstanding player? If there was a transfer market during the game, wouldn't a lot of the top counties look, be looking for Ian Corbett as a centre-back? The awful thing is that it will be next year before we see him in a Limerick jersey Well, that's again. what I said, George. Look, Limerick football is really is on the way up. Uh, it was on the way up last year. It's, the graph is still continuing. Look, there's eight, they're, not, they're eight points behind. They're not an eight-point worse team than Cork today. They've competed with Cork. They've been very competitive. But like I said, George, it'll be almost seven months before they get a chance to play a competitive game today. How can they improve standards? How, they can, how can they close? the gap with the top counties not under that system Joe. the final whistle sounds here in Limerick and it's Cork as expected to advance to this year's monster football final which will be in two weeks time it was a tough assignment for them Limerick gave it their very best shot as uh, Pat Spillan was saying it certainly was not uh, an eight point difference no. in real terms there was a lot of quality down there to be shown by Limerick, but let's give full credit to Cork as well. Their defence was, as you've been mentioning, Pat, outstanding. Well, Joe, at the, at the end of the day, semi-finals are about winning. Cork won. They, did, they achieved what they set out to be. Uh, it's not about performances. Cork won playing badly. Will he be back? And this is, I mean, this is the big question mark. Two, there are two jewels in the defence today. He was the jewel, Sean Powter. Uh, two points, absolutely superb. Daniel O'Mahony taken off injured as well. Two big question marks. Now you talk about their defence, sure. I mean, only one Limerick forward scored from play today. That's how good the defence were. In their last four matches, Cork have only conceded one goal. I thought the fitness of Cork was very good. The con Conditioning of Cork was very good. They've achieved what they've set out to do. They're into Munster final against Kerry of Tipperary. But holy God, if you can only get two two forwards scoring from playing uh, as they did. If two two forwards score from play today, Jar, if two forwards score from play in a Munster final, they won't be winning any Munster final. A win, but there's a lot, a lot of improvement to do. So that's the uh, situation here in Limerick. Final score, Limerick 11 points, Cork 1 goal and 16. Thank you very much indeed for your company this afternoon at the LIT Gaelic Grounds. And from Patsville, Sir Canning, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye-bye.